Hello, my name is Christy Porter, and today our quality of character is going to be about accountability. Accountability is probably one of the most important things we teach our players here in my program. If you can make a player accountable for themselves, then growth and change can happen. But if you can make a player accountable for another, or make them accountable for each other, then we can really be successful as a team, as a program. So I think accountability helps push along the idea that it's about the team and not about myself. And as we go through these slides, we'll talk a little bit more about accountability and what a leader must possess. If you look at the successful presidential candidates that we have, like Abraham Lincoln, we call them Honest Abe, um, he was held accountable for, for much. George Washington, um, I shall not tell a lie. Those are all qualities that you want in a leader. You want accountability. Um, Harry Truman had a slogan, the buck stops here, which means all fault goes to me. So accountability is the willingness to accept the consequences of your decisions without placing blame on another. And it, it's something that we struggle with in today's society, I believe. Now when we look at accountability, some other words kind of pop out at us. Culpability, um, ownership, owning, owning our mistakes, owning the decisions that we made. Duty, obligation, responsibility is another big word that you'll hear associated with accountability as we discuss it. So taking ownership and being responsible for our decisions. So accountability. Leaders and coaches must be accountable, one, to make amends. Mistakes happen, and when they do, acknowledge them, ask for forgiveness. Sometimes a little forgiveness is needed uh, in our society. Next, allow for teachable moments and improved systems. How are we supposed to get better if we never admit our faults? It allows us to teach others and be an example for others. And it also helps show us where we are, where our systems are weak and we can kind of problem solve it and get some ideas on how to strengthen it. So that last problem or solution didn't work, that's my fault, what will work? So asking others for input is a great opportunity to teach. Next, it also builds trust. Being accountable, owning up to your mistakes. It, it allows others to feel like you are trustworthy. They can believe in what you say. When you deny, or point fingers at others, that's really hard to get behind when you are being led by someone with that characteristic. So building trust is also an important aspect of accountability. And last, it places value on the importance of the people that you lead. Your actions impact the people that follow you. So if you are unwilling to take responsibility for the decisions that you make, those that follow you, they seem to be of very little value. You didn't value their time, their effort, and their willingness to put you ahead of them. So, when we're talking about accountability, a leader must make amends, allow teachable moments, build trust, and also place value on the people that you lead. So, one of my favorite characters in the Bible is David. I, I find him to be this beautifully flawed, human being that at the very end of it all runs back to God and asks for forgiveness with no excuses, no apologies, no excuses being made. Um, he says that whatever you choose, Lord, I, it's justified. It's justified. So Christianity is based on the whole concept of being accountable. You can choose in this life. You get to make decisions. And those decisions you will answer for at some point in time. If you are unwilling to admit your mistakes, how can you repent for them? How can you ask for forgiveness if we are unwilling to even acknowledge them? Um, in this story, David sins and asks for forgiveness. This uh, particular passage refers to when David saw Bathsheba and took her for his wife. He had done a series series of pretty despicable things in order to make this come about. He sent her husband into the front line of battle um, 
just to make sure that he could secure this position. So he was quite deceitful in how he went about it. And against you, you only have I sinned, is what David says once he is confronted with his transgression. And you are right in verdict, verdict and justified when you judge. So he's talking to God here. He's praying to God and saying that, yes, I have made mistakes. He is holding himself accountable for the decisions that he has made, and he is ready to accept the consequences of those decisions. So one of my uh, favorite movies is Mr. Carter, and he is a high school basketball coach that is tasked with coming into this high school that has had very low standards for their student athletes, especially their basketball players, when it comes to their test scores, their attitudes. Um, he comes into this program and really tries to change the culture. He has one particular student who is rebellious from the very beginning, and he makes an example of him. He cuts him from the team for refusal to be held accountable to the standards that he set. So we're going to watch this clip, and we're going to see the transformation of Mr. Cruz as it goes on.
Now, Mr. Cruz is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but because Coach Carter held them to a higher standard, he held them accountable for their actions, they were able to have a very successful season. Does it always turn out like that? No. You know, you can hold your team accountable and still have a losing season, but it's who they became along the way. It's how he built them up and how he taught them the important lessons that they would need throughout their life. High school was going to, to pass away eventually. They were going to have to go out to the world. And the lessons that he was able to instill with them moved them from a victim mentality into being accountable. So the victim mentality, it blames others, makes excuses, and waits and hopes that things get better. Um, whereas holding yourself accountable, you acknowledge reality, you own up to your mistakes, and you also find solutions. So it is action driven. Um, when you blame others, you give up your power to change. And really that's what this, this life is about. It's about recognizing our faults and making changes, recognizing our weaknesses, and being willing to make some changes. Um, so in that clip, we saw that the leaders were held to a high standard. Uh, they joined together and helped him finish all of the sprints and um, the push-ups that he needed to do in order to play. So that they bonded together, and it was a good example of what it should look like when you're accountable for each other.